For most of us, we've been taught that canine guidance is ideal when it comes to doing lateral guidance. Studies have even shown that canine guidance reduces the muscle activity of temporalis and masseter muscle. In this video, I'm going to dive deep into why canine guidance is considered superior, but more importantly, five clinical scenarios where groove function is not only necessary, but crucial when it comes to doing occlusal management. Before I start with canine guidance, let's discuss what is canine guidance and what is groove function. So canine guidance is literally when you are, your patient's guiding on the right side, let's say, doing lateral excursion, on the canine, is touching in lateral excursion. So canine is being used for disclusion of the rest of the teeth. So that's called canine guidance. Same scenario, if patient's going on the right side, grinding on the right side, when canine two premolar and mesial of the molar or uh, second first or second molar, if they are contacting, one or more teeth are contacting, that is called groove function. It could be lateral incisor plus canine plus premolars plus molar, or it could be just a molar and uh, two molars and one premolar, or it could be any number of teeth more than one. So that's called groove function. But generally, when we are planning groove function, we are really planning canine and two premolars. Maximum, we are going up to a mesial cusp of molar. We don't want to go posteriorly when we are planning groove function in our restoration because the more posterior you go, more forces the, uh, your tooth is going to have. And in lateral excursion, we know that more forces becomes forces becomes quite magnified. And that's why we don't want too much forces in lateral excursion. And that's what breaks the restor restorations. And that's why lateral guidance is important. So that's the difference between canine guidance and group function. So why canine guidance? Let's look at the tooth canine. Canine is favorable crown and root length ratio. Canine has got longer root and shorter crown. Canine also lasts longer in the mouth. And because of that, if you do canine guidance, then you know it will last longer. It also has more proprioception because of the long root and more pedial ligaments. It, the palatal surface of canine is ideal when it comes to managing guidance and mechanically is quite anteriorly to the TMJ. And because of that, we know the studies have shown that the force is applied to canine because it's quite anterior, is much, much less. And because of that, you have less occlusal loading of the tooth. So there are lots of reasons why we should choose canine as canine guidance and why we should choose canine guidance because it's anterior to in the mouth to the TMJ. However, the reason I choose canine guidance is because it's easy to deal with it. One surface and you can add a little bit composite and you can make it steeper and disclude all the restoration. So it's much easier and that's the reason I like canine guidance. However, there are five clinical scenarios where canine guidance is not ideal. So clear scenario number one is when you have class two division one uh, occlusion where patients got severe overjet and anterior open bite. When patient has got anterior open bite, canine is not in contact, you can't get canine guidance. And for that, you will have to rely on group function and you have to manage that really carefully. And those are the patients when you're doing posterior, let's say, upper right seven restoration, and now patient's guiding on upper right seven because there is anterior open bite, then there is more likely that your restoration will fracture if you have not managed occlusion properly. The other scenario is class three cases where mandible is ahead of the uh, maxilla. And again, you can't really use canine guidance for that tooth. Some of the end-to-end -end cases where there are literally teeth on top of each other. Again, canine guidance is not useful in that scenario because there is not enough overlap for you to get canine guidance. In that case, is you need to do groove function. When canine is post encore crown or very, very weak, you don't really want to put so much load on canine. Otherwise, the restoration on that tooth will fracture. And that's the reason we may want to distribute the load and we may want to use groove function. And lastly, if you have canine as an implant restoration, then also I want group function. I don't want my implant restoration canine to guide laterally. So these are the five clinical scenarios which you need to consider when you consider lateral guidance and use group function.
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, then go to description and click on the link and join our eight part email series to improve your treatment planning and also click on the subscribe button so that you can get notified for the more videos.